The most advanced Japanese car of the 90s wasn't the Toyota Supra. It wasn't the Honda NSX. It wasn't even the Nissan GTR. It was twin turbocharged, had four wheel steering and motorized aerodynamic motorized aerodynamic elements that morph the air around it depending on its speed. This car influenced car design for decades to come, even if it was only around for a few short years. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Mitsubishi 3000 GT. It's the late 80s and Japan is riding the biggest economic boom in modern history. Japanese companies are exporting their products at record pace and everyone's making a ton of money. Life is good. So good that the Japanese automakers are experiencing a golden age of design. Toyota, Nissan, Mazda, and Honda are all at the top of their game and poised to launch some of their most famous models in coming years. As the 90s came into full swing, Mitsubishi's competitors were pumping out cars like the Skyline GTR, 300ZX, and Honda NSX. Mitsubishi needed to build a car that outshined all of them and secure the company's place as the pride of Japan. To do that, the new Mitsubishi had to be the most advanced machine Japan had ever produced since the Mobile Suit Gundam. Mitsubishi engineers got together and started writing a list of everything they wanted on the car. And the sky was the limit. How about twin turbos? Easy. What about electronic exhaust to make it loud whenever you want? Done. Electronically adjustable struts so the driver can choose between comfort and sport. Come on guys, blue sky. What if the wing adjusted itself for better stability at speed and a little lip came down on the front? Yo, Steve, I swear to God, you are reading my mind. You're a freaking genius. The engineers took the wish list and got to work on Mitsubishi's flagship model. Mitsubishi GTO. First up was the engine. The new car would be available in both front and all wheel drive configurations, but both versions would share a V6 power plant. The 6G7 series was developed as a sort of workhorse for all of Mitsubishi's lineup. It's been in the Galan, the P Pajero? Pajero. The Pajero, and even found its way into the Chrysler Sebring and Hyundai Sonata. It's been everywhere, man. But the 6G72 that would be going into the Mitsubishi Halo car would be unlike all the rest. It would not have one, but two turbochargers, making 320 horsepower and 315 torque powers. And you need to remember that this is 1990. That's five years before Post Malone is even born. The GTO was more powerful than the Ferrari 348 of the day, a car which the GTO borrowed a few styling cues. The GTO had two modes for the exhaust, touring mode for when you're driving your grandma back to Troy's house because things are getting serious between them and she's a little sensitive to loud noises, and sport mode where a little valve opens up redirecting the exhaust through a path of less resistance, a path you wish you had because driving grandma around for free and seeing her shack up with Troy is getting a little taxing. I just want her to be happy. And I don't know if she's ready, if I'm ready for another man to look after her. You know? The advances continued with Mitsubishi's active suspension. Like the exhaust, there was touring for when grandma made you drive her and Troy to the drive-in. Troy stays in the back seat. And sport mode for when you went to the back roads and let out all that aggression that's pent up inside. The GTO's most impressive feature was its signature active aerodynamics. Hmm, tell me more. The GTO's active aero featured both a motorized lip splitter and rear wing that engaged at speeds over 50 miles an hour. This system increased stability at highway speeds and was programmed to break just as the warranty expired. <laughs> the GTO also had pop-up <laughs> headlights. Cool. <laughs> The culmination of all this technology into one car made the GTO one of the most forward-thinking cars in the world at the time. Chock full of features that wouldn't be mainstream for another 25 years. The GTO came to the US in 1990 under two different names, just like my dad. They couldn't call it the GTO in the States because there was some other car with the same name. So instead, it would be known as the 3000 GT. There would also be a Dodge version called the Stan aimed after the greatest Jamie Foxx film of all time. That's hot. The 3000 GT came in a number of trim levels that lacked all the fancy high tech stuff, but the one to have was the VR4. 
Critics praised the new Mitsubishi. This thing was crazy. Zero to 60 in 5.2 seconds, a top speed of 155 miles an hour. What the hell is going on? This is a freaking Mitsubishi! Unfortunately, the 3000 GT had one disadvantage that would follow it for its entire lifespan. It was heavy. Hmm, very fat, I see. I feel you. <laughs> All that tech added up, and in the end, the VR4 weighed in at over 3,800 pounds. Not great when its rivals weighed hundreds of pounds less, but that didn't stop Mitsubishi from persisting. The first GTO facelift came in 1993, and gone were the pop-up headlights. The 6G72 was tuned to pump out 20 more horsepower, which helped to liven up the acceleration, and a new six-speed transmission was installed. The second facelift came in 1996 with some minor changes, including a new rear spoiler. Gone was the almost cutesy styling of the early 90s, and in was an aggressive pointy nose with a mouth like a fucking Mako shark. Hello. And the end result would fit right into the cast of the Fast and the Furious. This thing is cool. But not as good as the older models. Why? That economic bubble we talked about popped. Demand for Japanese sports cars started falling along with the value of the yen, so Mitsubishi needed to make their cars cheaper. They had to take out the active aero, active exhaust, and active suspension. But without those gadgets, I mean, what's the friggin' point? The whole goal of the GTO was to be as advanced as possible, and now that's gone. If people wanted a sports car, they would go for something light and agile, not a bulky, all-wheel drive touring car like the GTO. Like I said before, the GTO never got that special aura around it like some other JDM legends, even if it was more high tech. And I think that's in part because we always had access to it. From the beginning of its life, Americans could buy the 3000 GT and the Stealth. There was never a feeling of lust that we had for Japanese exclusive cars like the R32. And that's messed up because this Mitsubishi had features that wouldn't go mainstream for another two decades. In many ways, it influenced sports car design that we love today. It seems like every supercar out there has has active aero. Oh, your mom's comfy SUV has sports suspension settings. It was way ahead of its time. And let's just hope that they don't bring it back as a crossover! Eclipse! Lancer! Special thanks to Honey for sponsoring this episode of Up to Speed. The more of you who sign up for Honey, the more cool shows we get to bring you. What is Honey? Honey is a free browser extension that automatically finds the best coupons on the web so you always get the best prices on everything you buy online. It does all of the work for you. Whenever there's a coupon code box, it searches for the deal. There's no reason that I can think of for you not to add Honey to your browser today. One, it takes literally two clicks to do it. Two, it's free. Three, it's more than free because it'll save you money. Four, it helps us bring you more videos. Click on the link below to add Honey to your browser right now. Please do it. Literally everyone in our office uses it even before they sponsor. Or you can go join honey.com slash donut media. We got a link down here. Please do it! We put out a new video just about every day. Click this big circle to subscribe so you don't miss any of it. We didn't even know this was a subscribe button until like yesterday. I mentioned both horsepowers and torques powers. You want to know what the heck those mean? Watch this episode of Science Garage. Do you like Mitsubishis? Watch this episode of Up to Speed. You want a cool donut shirt? Go to shop.donut.media. Follow me on Instagram at James Pumphrey. Follow Donut on Instagram at Donut Media. I love you.